since I started keeping mice a couple of years ago, I've only ever kept intact males which have to be housed on their own, whereas females have to be housed in groups. I have spoken about my reasons for why I don't keep females in previous videos, but I figured since the question comes up so often, I might as well make a dedicated video talking about it. So Cyprus does not have a well-regulated pet market. In fact, we have hardly any laws and regulations around the sale of pets at all. There are a few laws and regulations around the sales of dogs and cats, but that's pretty much where it stops. Oh, and we also don't have any kind of rescues, shelters, or adoption agencies for anything but, once again, dogs or cats. So as far as the pet care world goes over here, it's a big mess, and progress is very, 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 very slow even for Cyprus. When you want a pet mouse over here, your only option is to go and get a feeder from a pet shop. And there is no distinction between feeder mice and pet mice. They're just all feeder mice. Rodents and small mammals in general are not hugely popular pets here, so there isn't a big demand for them. So most pet shops do not sell pet mice, so to speak. They sell any old mice with any old colour and they just sell them as feeders. Most people don't buy them to keep them as pets. And because the majority of people who buy mice are buying them as feeders and not pets, there isn't a demand for them to be bred as pets. The difference between pets and feeders are that pets are bred usually for longevity and health. Although, of course, when it comes to big chain pet shops, like in other countries, you've got Petco, PetSmart, Pets at Home, those places are often supplied by rodent mills and they breed their well, all of their animals uh, without health and longevity in mind. They just want to create as many new animals as possible so they can create as much profit as possible. So that is an exception. But usually in the countries that have those shops, you do also have pet breeders who take a little more care when they're breeding their animals. Now, because we don't have those big corporate multi-million pet shop chains over here, we also don't have rodent mills, which in itself is a good thing. But that leads to most pet shops being small and independently owned and breeding their own stock of small animals. So for breeding your feeder mouse stock, it's obviously pretty logical that the majority of pet shops just put all of their males and females into one tank and just leave them to go at it. At this point though, you might be able to see where I'm going with this. Because pet shops keep the males and females in one tank and just allow them to actively breed and keep replenishing the stock naturally, it means that if you were to get a female mice or a group of female mice, as you should be getting if you're getting females, there is a very high risk of getting not just one, but getting all of your female mice in that group, bring them home and finding out that they are pregnant. On a technical level, I have absolutely no problem whatsoever with taking care of pregnant mice and their litters. However, it's not just technical, it's also financial, emotional. There's also the consideration of what happens to all of these young mice after they've grown up. As somebody who does have experience taking care of pregnant hamsters and hamster litters, I already know how expensive litter care and pregnancy care can get. It is not something you just enter into on a whim. There's also a dozen different things that can go wrong medically, which means you also have to take into consideration the potential cost of vet bills, emergency C-sections, things like that. Emotionally, the whole situation can be incredibly draining and incredibly stressful, not just for you, but for the mice as well. And bearing in mind that these would be untamed mice because they would be brand new to the family. Even if everything went right and went smoothly and there were no complications, medical issues, financial surprises, there's still the additional emotional stress on me when it comes to rehoming the pups, knowing full well that these pups are not going to homes to be pets. They're going to be feeders. Now, I have no problems with mice being used as feeders. Of course I don't. And other animals need to eat. Carnivores need to eat. Feeders have to exist. It's not, I'm not, I'm not one of those crazy people who thinks that carnivores should be not fed their natural diet. It's ridiculous. Of course they should be fed mice if that is the diet that they need. I have no problem with that. But these are gonna have been babies that I raised, that I saw from when they were born, that I've watched grow up, and I just cannot bring myself to send them off knowing what's going to happen to them. I couldn't do that. I wouldn't emotionally be able to deal with that. So for me, getting female mice would be an enormous risk. And it is a risk that one day I would like to take when I have the financial backup, when I have the space to be able to keep all of the pups, even once they've grown up. It is something I would like to do one day. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> Ideally, if I do get females in the future and I do take that risk, I would like for them to not be pregnant, of course. I don't actually want to deal with that situation. But I can't just pretend that risk isn't there. I can't just jump into that and hope for the best. I can only do it when I'm in a situation where, worst case scenario, if they are all pregnant, 
I can handle that situation and handle the consequences of that situation. So I think you can agree those are fairly solid and responsible reasons for me not wanting to get female mice. If I do continue to keep mice going forward, I'm going to be sticking with intact males since they have to be housed on their own anyway, so it works out well for the both of us. One little note to add in at the end here, since this has been a discussion of mice, I feel like this is going to come up in the comments section, but no, I have not thought more about whether or not I'll be bringing another mouse into the family soon since sodium's passing. The most that I've thought about it at this point is actually considering whether I want to take a long break from keeping mice. Anyway, thank you for watching to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave likes and comments and all that stuff that helps support the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys whenever I see you next.